Hey everyone, it's Jim from Melatone Kits. And in this episode, in this first episode, we're going to do a walkthrough of the stepped attenuator design. So we're going to take a, a look at the actual prototype build. And we're going to take a look at the circuit and see how it, how it works. And we're going to see how it compares to other uh, volume control circuits. So this is about as simple as you can get. There's no transformer. It's on our new standard narrow chassis. It's the same depth as all of the other kits. And it's the same height as the preamp kits. So it'll integrate nicely. So on the input side, you basically have two pairs of RCAs with a switch that gets you, when it's pointing at this side, then that's the side that's live. And it's got a center detente, which is quite useful. It's exactly the same as um, both of our preamps. And on the output side, we have uh, two pairs of RCA outs that are in parallel. So they are essentially just tagged together. But what that gives you is the option. Let's say you needed to take a second um, uh, pair of signals off and feed them to your low level input of your subwoofer, for example, or you need them for some other purposes. Um, they're there. It was just easy to install them and I figured it would be something useful. So we put them in the kit design. There is a ground post as well. And again, if, if you end up with some sort of a ground issue with your equipment, which can happen, You've got a post that gets you to ground and may well solve a problem with another piece of equipment. And of course, you've got a volume control. And the volume control can come in silver or black and that'll match any preamp you had. Now, the attenuator design is the best um, the least intrusive volume control I can design for any system. And we're going to look at that actually. We'll look at it at the schematic level in a few minutes. But sonically, this is about as clean and clear a volume control as you can possibly have. When I built it, I built it sort of as a fun prototype. I mean, almost all of our kits start off as a prototype design and not all of them will end up as kits. In this case though, when Charles and I sat down to listen to the sound of this, it was like removing an entire veil from the music. And our system was already highly resolving at that point. It sounded very, very good. The detail was excellent. The sound stage was excellent. This didn't make a small difference. This made a huge difference. It brought the whole system up one big giant leap on the analog side. And I'll talk a little bit why it's not necessarily going to help on a digital side. Now, it'll give those benefits on the digital side, but the big problem with digital is that it is, it's, it's too edgy. It's, it's too perfect. And it actually can benefit from the distortion that a regular volume pot interjects or injects into the system, into the signal chain. So when it come, came to our digital sources, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't actually that impressed with what it was doing. I, I actually preferred a standard volume pot over uh, the stepped attenuator. And you would put this typically in a system, you would put this between your source. So your source would come in here and here and your control preamp. And what you do with your control preamp is you would put the volume on the control, on the, not on this one, but on the control preamp, you'd bring the volume up to max, and then you would allow this control here as essentially your master volume control. Okay, so I've taken the, the bottom off so that we can get access easily, but there is and of course, we're going to get some reflection here. Sorry about that, folks, but we need to light the scene. <laughs> so there is an aluminum shield that will go over here, and it gets strapped right here to the ground post. 
and you can see it's absolutely dead easy. Here's your double pull, double throw center off switch right here. And it just switches between these pairs. From there, the signal comes out here, or in would be a better way of looking at it. And um, we have a, a 1K resistor that forms part of uh, the resistor network. And the signal comes from here. Let's just follow the right channel. So the red wire is the right channel. And it comes into the common on uh, the stepped attenuator. And at the same time, it goes out. And you can see here, we have both of our right RCA outs. Let me just tilt it over here so you can see. There we go. Both of them go out off of the same point. The left channel is exactly the same. We have a common star ground point here. And that'll take the ground from the stepped attenuator. And it'll tie all of the grounds of the RCA ins and outs together to a common star ground point. And the ground for the stepped attenuator is shared with um, the RCA uh, shield return path that'll come in on your interconnects. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the actual um, resistor array here. Now there's a couple of ways of building this and there's a couple of ways of designing the circuit itself and we'll look at those in a minute on paper but let's just look at how it's physically constructed. So um, there's 24 steps on this um, attenuator and that means that there are 24 banks of resistors so there's match pairs so each pair of resistors is a left and a right channel. And there's a common ground connection. And whenever or wherever the switch is, that'll be the pair of resistors that go to ground and that'll establish the volume. Okay, well, let's get some paperwork out and take a look at some of my sketches so we can understand a little bit more uh, at the uh, electrical level, how this is working. Okay, let's start with uh, a typical analog volume pot. Now, we're not going to talk about um, uh, digital switches, um, um, light switches. There's, there's probably a hundred different ways to control your volume. A very common way is to use um, discrete digital switches. And I, as you, if you followed any of any of my uh, tube labs or any of any of the kits that I design and build, I'm very much about short signal paths, uh, no integrated circuits anywhere um, ever, and um, as a result of that kind of design topology, we end up with a very clean, clear, uh, phase cohesive signal. Uh, that gives us amazing clarity um, at the speakers, a great sound stage. It, essentially, we're trying to trying to reproduce the original um, source material as best as we possibly can and interfere with it as little as possible. So this is your typical analog uh, Alps pot. Let's call it 100K. They come in different uh, different resistances, but 100K, a stereo pot would be 100K times two. So two pots basically ganged one on top of the other. Hang on a second. I think I have one on the bench here somewhere. So here's, here's a very common Alps pot. And you can see here, we have two pots ganged. You could have a mono pot, one channel. I've seen them all the way up to uh, at least four channels. And you know, there's not much to it. So, uh, but they work really well. They sound very good and they're reasonably priced. You can motorize these things and the, these are in millions of pieces of audio equipment. Um, now 
This is what it looks like at the schematic level. So here's the resistive trace that the wiper goes around. And depending on where we are, we're going to have a different amounts of resistance. So at one end, we'll have 100k ohms. So that's a, that's a thousand ohms of resistance. Yeah. And further down, we might have 40k, 10k until we get to zero resistance. Signal is going to come in on one leg. The other leg will go to ground. And off of the wiper, this is what makes contact with the resistive track, we'll take the signal out. So depending on where we are, will depend on the amount of resistance, and we'll determine how much of the signal leaks off to ground before it goes out as our audio signal. And remember, electricity follows um, the... Uh, the least um, resistive path to ground. So that's how essentially all these analog pots work. The resistive track though um, puts a, a unique type of distortion into the signal and until you remove it you wouldn't even know it existed because you're so used to hearing it. That small amount, we're not talking about a lot of distortion, it would probably be very difficult to even measure it. Um, that small amount of distortion appears to help digital audio sound better. It makes it more analog sounding. <laughs> so, okay, so let's take a look at uh, a very common um, stepped attenuator. So if you were to um, uh, buy a unit that's typically on the market, this is what it would look like. Now, let's look at what we've got here. So, the, um, in fact, let me put a volume knob here so you can sort of understand it, yeah? Okay, so, instead of a wiper, we have a contact arm, and we have a resistor array. And the resistor array is done in series. So one resistor connected to the next resistor connected to the next resistor. So you have a big array of... Now, this is just a sort of a, a, a pictorial a generalization of the circuit, yeah? There's going to be a lot more resistors in series. At the end of this, we go to ground. So our signal comes in. We'll have a first resistor here in series and and that will help determine our resistor array and I, I'll show you um, the resistor array that we've come up with and the signal will also go out at this point but we leak off a certain amount of it to ground so that attenuates the signal right so depending on where we are will depend on how many resistors are in series. In this case, in this pictorial version or caricature would be a better way of looking at it. We've got one, two, three, four. In, in reality, there might be 20 or 30 resistors in series. So this is one channel we're looking at. If we had stereo, a stereo attenuator, we'd have a second one stacked on top of it, right? So that when we turn the volume knob, we'd be turning two contact arms at the same time, very much the way the Alps pot works. So depending on the resistance will depend on how much signal goes to ground. This is very, very common. It's a little easier to build, which is probably why it's the most common version. And the, down, the downside of this is that not only do your resistors have to be matched, but you can have an accumulative error in your channel balance. And I'll talk a little bit about balance in a minute when we get to my circuit design. But when you've got a whole bunch of resistors in series on both channels, if there's an error, it may accumulate. Now, it may work in your advantage and it may average out, but it may not. If you have one bad resistor on one channel and you missed it or it drifted slightly or your electrical connection is not that great, 
than your euchard because you'll, especially if it's towards the ground end, because you'll end up with a channel imbalance. I'm not a big fan of this. The attenuator I use could be built this way, but I would not recommend you do that for the reasons that I've talked about. Okay, let's take a look at my circuit. Okay, now they're very, very similar circuits. Now, this is a series parallel circuit. The other one is a series, series parallel circuit. Now, what we are in parallel with in almost every case with these attenuators and volume controls is the load resistor just before we're going to enter the grid of the first tube. But don't get hung up on that. Let's just walk through the schematic so that we understand everything. So we again we have basically a rotary contact arm and we can actually build this on the same chassis, the same switch as the other type of, of series resistor arrays can be built. So our signal comes in, we come in and in our array, we come through a 1K. That creates a divider. Um, and we're going we're gonna to have all these resistors as options. So only one of them are going to be actually in circuit. So the beauty of this design is that we have a total of two resistors. And that's it. So let's say we're at a fairly low volume here. And we have a one, I drew this wrong. It, no, it's a 15 R. I'm upside down. Sorry, folks. 15 R. So 15 ohm resistor. These are re the real resistor values. So at a very low, uh, low volume, we have a very, very low amount of resistance. So 3 R3, 3.3 ohms. And almost all the signal as a result leaks out to ground. Think of the ground as sort of a drain with a valve on it. The resistors are the valve. And as the volume gets turned up, we get more and more resistance to ground. And that reduces the amount of signal that can leak off until we're at absolute maximum volume and we have a 47K resistor. So there'll be there will be no attenuation. All the signal, 100%, would go this way. And as we get, as we approach maximum volume, of course, most of the signal is going to go out to our to our destination, which is going to almost certainly be a control preamp. So that's how this works. The beauty of how this works is that these resistors can be close matched as pairs, and we we can completely ignore anything else around it. Now, obviously each of the pairs has to be properly matched. And I'll show you the, the worksheet in just a moment so you can have an idea. But what we do is we ship the kits with uh, very high quality quarter watt resistors that are 1% resistors. That's plus one, minus 1%. 1 and um, with the four resistors in hand, you can, you can actually match up a very, very tight pair. Now, remember, when you're working with a resistive path, it's really hard to get both channels closely matched. So even a really good Alps pot that's been well made, that we've screened and tested, it might be out as much as 1K between channels. That's 1,000 ohms difference. And it can make quite a difference in channel balance. Channel balance in a well-designed and well-made stepped attenuator is going to be essentially perfect. It'll be well, well inside the balance of your actual tubes that are in your preamplifier. Even if they're tested and the GM, the mutual conductance is balanced, Typically, you would consider 5% or better as being perfect and 10% being acceptable for older uh, tube types that are getting rare and scarce. We can get these uh, attenuators inside of 
uh, under under a, lower than a percent, and uh, if you're selecting, you probably will find that you're somewhere around 0.1 of a percent difference. So essentially, you'll be perfect, <laughs> certainly compared to everything else in the circuit. Okay, well, let's just take a quick look at um, the worksheet, and we'll take a quick look at an attenuator. Okay, so here's a worksheet that comes with the kit. It just helps you keep track of what you've uh, installed and what you've tested. So it gives you the set, set A resistor values in sequence, because of course they have to be assembled and installed in sequence. And it shows you here the DB steps. And you can see how when we're at a uh, very low volume at the beginning, the very first step, 3.3 ohms, we're at minus 46 dB. So we essentially have almost no signal out coming out of our uh, attenuator. Almost everything is going to ground. Conversely, when we're way, as we turn up the volume, our dB, of course, our minus dB improves, improves, improves until we're essentially at zero dB, um, which is maximum volume. Now, now that we've talked a little bit about the circuit, this is a little bit easier to understand when you see these matched pairs of resistors. And it's a little easier to understand um, how everything works and why it works so bloody well. Now, these attenuators can actually be assembled differently than this. The resistors can be loaded sideways like this. But the disadvantage of that is that you end up with two ground straps. And the advantage of doing it this way is you end up with just one. So it's not perhaps quite as pretty as doing it the other way, but the circuit's slightly simpler, um, in my opinion. And... Uh, and nobody does it this way, and this is the way I sort of developed it. And uh, if you follow along with what I do, I, I'm really not a slave to what industry does as a standard. I'm more interested in what I think is the best way of doing things. And then, then we build a prototype, we test the prototype, and if we like how it works and how it sounds, then I really don't care how everybody else does things. <laughs> so the nice thing about these switches is that they're quite affordable and, the, um, and they seem to be very, very reliable. The steps uh, have very good continuity. Uh, we haven't had a single problem with the prototype build or what I'm showing you here actually is kit number one build. This is what we're actually going to see being built later on in the build series. So, um, yeah, so welcome aboard. It's a great sounding volume control. It's about as simple and um, an interference with the signal path as I can come up with. Um, and um, yeah, and it just, it's, it, it's fabulous in the sense that it does not interfere with the sound whatsoever. Well, let's get going with the build.